Welcome to episode three of Baking and Boozing. I am Amber, your chef and host for today. And I am here with one of my good friends from Maui. Everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, everyone. How's it going today? It's going really well. I'm excited. I can't wait for my kitchen to smell like fresh baking because that doesn't yeah. happen. <laughs> <laughs> then we finally get to have margaritas again together. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. <laughs> So Emily and I met while I was living on Maui. She still lives there currently. And um, any chance we got, we met up and enjoyed margaritas together whenever possible. Um, and right before I left, it was during the pandemic, we went to have brunch, which ended up with margaritas anyway. And then we finished off with pedicures. So margaritas are definitely our thing. And that is what is on the menu for today. We decided to stray from our usual, just on the rocks, normal margarita to an apricot margarita, which we have paired with churro bars. Um, that cinnamon from the churro is going to go really, really nicely with the apricot. Um, so we're definitely looking forward to that. Before we get started on any of the baking and get Emily's house smelling amazing, I do have several questions that I would like to ask for you. Um, All right, <laughs> I'm ready. I know. Prepare yourself, okay? This is going to be super hard. Okay. So question number one, on a scale of zero to 10, where would you rate your baking skills? Zero being you never bake, you hate baking, this is totally not your thing. 10 being you're a full-blown professional, you can do it with your eyes closed. I'd say a, a solid five. Solid five. All right. I right like down the that. middle. <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything in particular that you like to bake? Like I really like doing cupcakes and cakes and things like that. I do cannot have... make a cheesecake okay. to save my life. Like I struggle. <laughs> <laughs> we can definitely work on that. Maybe that'll be our, our pastry for next time. I can teach you how to make a, a pretty decent cheesecake. Um, do you have any, have you made any cupcakes or any kind of pastry that have been just like your absolute favorite so far? My favorite thing to make are cupcakes, but my favorite desserts that I've ever made uh, are butter tarts. And so my husband is obsessed with butter tarts. And so that's kind of my favorite thing to make for him, but it's a little bit more involved, it takes a lot longer, so I don't make them often, but they are. All right, so now that we've talked about your baking skills, let's talk about your bartending skills. Where would you rate yourself on a scale of zero to 10? I would give myself probably a nine out of 10 for my bartending skills. I used to be a bar manager and was a bartender for years and years. I'm pretty comfortable behind a bar. And what is your favorite spirit to drink? whiskey. Ooh. A solid rye is just, yeah. I'm surprised. I did not expect that. I I don't know what I was expecting, but not whiskey. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well, that's just because we would always go out to drink together and it would be margaritas. Okay. Last but not least, outside of COVID, how frequently do you like to invite guests over to entertain, make drinks, maybe bake something or not? So we have a really great group of people here and so we will often do like a potluck style uh, we do a lot of progressive dinners if you don't mind could you just give a rundown of what progressive dinners are yeah so with progressive dinners you have a group of couples usually and every house hosts a different part of the meal so because we've got four couples we usually will do the first uh, is appetizers and we try to do a different cocktail at each place as well just to mix it up so there's appetizers cocktails uh, there's soup and salad with a different drink then entree then dessert that sounds like so much fun I hope that maybe one of these treats that I'm working on with you will be something that you can make for your your group next time so hopefully if you like the recipe on that note should we go ahead and get started with baking our churro bars. It's basically just standing between us and our margaritas. So I would love to get started on that so that we can pop it in and then make our margaritas. So let's go ahead and do that. That sounds amazing. For starters, we have this churro bar, which churros are typically a deep fried pastry. Basically, it's just uh, choux dough, which that's a French term, but it's choux paste where you deep fry it and then you roll it in cinnamon and sugar. I am not a fan of deep frying anything, which I think goes against every fiber of Southern living. I've had way too much experience standing over a deep fryer and I just would never like to do it ever again. So anytime I have the opportunity to convert a fried substance into a baked substance, I will. And that's exactly what we're going to do here today. For our churro bars, it's basically going to be all the churro flavorings in um, kind of like a brownie form or a blondie form. To get us started, we have 227 grams of brown butter. 
we're going to have 400 grams of light brown sugar, two eggs, 10 grams of vanilla, seven grams of baking powder, six grams of salt, 240 grams of AP flour, 50 grams of sucrose, which is just plain white sugar. And then the recipe calls for three grams of ground cinnamon, but I almost always double or even triple the amount of cinnamon recipes call for just because I like it so much. So I will leave that one up to you. First things first is browning the butter, and then we're also going to turn on our ovens. We'll go ahead and do that right now. It's going to preheat at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, Emily, let's go ahead and get our butter browned. That way we can let it cool and get started with making our churro bar. So I saw that you already have your 227 grams of butter measured out. So go ahead and unwrap that and toss it into your saucepan. And all we're gonna do is set this on medium low and let it just start melting. And then once it gets past the clarified stage, we will watch it brown and it's gonna be a thing of beauty. Now, what brown butter really is, is as you melt your butter, all of your milk solids fall to the bottom of the pan. So you have your clarified butter, which is butter without milk solids, um, that is resting on the top. And then on the very bottom, you have all of these particles. And the milk particles, as they brown, release this really great, fragrant, almost like nutty scent and flavor into the butter. And that will kind of transform the recipe that you're making. So you'll notice brown butter will step up different savory dishes as well, but it's actually the key ingredient to my salted chocolate chip cookies. It's just a really great way to step up any sort of recipe that you want to give a little dimension to. How's it looking? I'm just staring at butter right now. Oh. <laughs> All right. Butter is going to take just a few minutes as we let it melt in our pan. Really, the easy thing about brown butter is that you don't actually have to do anything. You just let it sit and melt. Are you hearing some gurgling? I am. Yes. All right. You don't, again, really don't need to do anything. We're just melting it, letting it come to a liquid stage. Um, and then as it liquefies, all of the milk solids will fall to the bottom. So this is electric and it can be very temperamental with its heating. Like it's really inconsistent. Does that matter when you're browning butter? It doesn't matter, gas or electric. It's still the same method of let it melt. And then when it melts then let it sit even longer on the heat and it'll turn brown. Um, there is a tip that I read that was actually, I don't do it, but it actually is helpful if you're new to browning butter. Um, use a pan that has a white bottom, like interior bottom, because that will allow you to see when the particles on the bottom are, have been browned and it'll give you a better idea of when to turn it off. I go by smell um, just because I've done this so many times and I know what smell I'm looking for. <laughs> but if, for someone who's brand new to browning butter, um, a, a helpful tip would be to use a pan that has a white bottom. Does it smell like warm butter or are you picking up any other scent with it? No, it smells a little bit different than just foil butter. So you'll notice the butter will go through a few stages. Right now it's got kind of like that foamy top happening. Mm -hmm. um, you'll let it just keep simmering through that and it will get into more of a bubbly top. And what I always notice is that when the browning process starts happening, the particles on the bottom, as they brown, sometimes will shoot up to the top and you'll start seeing a little bit of brown particle work its way into the foam. So that's also a good way to know that it's starting to brown. So keep an eye on it because you'll probably need to take your butter off soon. I'm not gonna stop staring at this because I'm so afraid of messing it up. You're not, I promise, you're doing fine. <laughs> um, are you seeing kind of like boil bubbles start peeking through the foam on top? Yes. yes. Good. Okay, how's yours looking? Darker yellow. That's where I am right now. So you're right on track. Can you smell it and see what it smells like? As I boil my face. With um, do the method where you, you wave the air towards you instead of putting your face on it. There you go. Are you picking up any other scents just yet? Not yet. Okay. Still I am, that. but it's because I know what I'm looking for. Um, but I think you are right on track with yours. And then if you really want to see the bottom, you can just give your pan a little swirl. So it'll agitate the foam that's on top and you can see around the edges, see if there are any browning particles. You shouldn't see them quite just yet. All right, mine is definitely smelling like brown butter. How does yours smell? Oh, it does smell a little different. Mm -hmm. Did yours suddenly just get very foamy? Yeah. In a different manner than the foam <laughs> that we had before? <laughs> yeah, almost like broken up. 
Yeah. Um, so this is one of the final stages of brown butter. So you should start seeing brown particles come up, especially if you do another swirl. The suspense is killing me. So I'm starting to see particles come up. I've been agitating it quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to turn my heat off because I know that it's going to keep cooking. I'm going to pour my brown butter into a bowl just so I can let it start cooling. Oh my God, this smells so good. If you can, try to not pour uh, any of your particles in. Um, you can strain it if you really want to. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> yes. It is one of my favorite scents ever. Maybe our next business endeavor can be food candles. So just candles that smell like our favorite foods. I am all for that. Yeah. So here's my brown butter. Yours is so much browner than mine. Well, you know, it'll it'll keep browning. It's because it's going to keep cooking. But I'm not seeing any brown bit. Even as you no. swirl, do like a continuous swirl. Oh, look, there it is. Now it's particles. Whoa, hello. Now I dump it, right? Yeah. Well, just... Okay, there. So you can see <laughs> I have left my brown bits in. Excellent. Do you have your brownie pan ready? Okay. I put parchment paper in mine, mostly just because I use parchment for everything. And really all you're going to do is line it so that um, there's a little bit of paper around the edges. What we're gonna do is mix our cinnamon sugar in a small bowl. And then we're gonna pour half of the cinnamon sugar on the bottom. And then once we mix our batter, we're gonna pour the other half of the cinnamon sugar on top. Scale out our 50 grams of sucrose. And it says three grams of ground cinnamon, but I just, I'm going to do triple that because I love cinnamon so much. So 50 grams, what is that in cups and cup sizes? I don't know. <laughs> I only use scaling for... Do you right, have I scale? got the scale. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I don't use, almost never use um, cups or teaspoons or anything like that. It's more precise this way. And you said six grams of cinnamon, correct? Yeah, the recipe calls for three. I always double it, so I'm gonna go for six just because I really love cinnamon. If you don't love cinnamon as much as I do, it's totally fine. Um, you can stick to the three grams. If you super love cinnamon, you can go even higher and triple it to nine grams. I am not gonna even try to get the extra out that I just accidentally mm -hmm. put in. So it's gonna be super cinnamon. Sounds amazing. One. And then basically I just took a small whisk and I'm just going to whisk it together. Um, this way your cinnamon and sugar are well blended. Because my hands are clean, I'm just going to pinch my cinnamon and sugar mixture and just sprinkle it all around the bottom. Only about half of it, right? Yes. Next thing on our recipe is to combine the browned butter, brown sugar, and stir them to combine. Um, I'm going to do this all in my mixer, so I'm going to put my brown butter into my mixing bowl. I'm going to measure out my 400 grams of brown sugar directly into that. And then I'm gonna pop it onto my mixer and let them just ride. Pour your brown butter onto your brown sugar, which it has cooled. We have given it enough time to cool down. It is, mine is still slightly warmer than room temp, but it's not gonna brulee my sugar or anything. Oh God, do you smell it, Emily? Oh, I do. It smells so good. All right, I'm gonna pop this onto my mixer and just mix to incorporate. If possible, this smells even better than just a regular brown, brown butter. So what am I looking for with this? So you don't want any dry sugar, if that makes sense. So you would see a color difference if any of the sugar was not mixed into butter. Next up, we're going to crack two eggs directly into our mixing bowl. Now that our eggs are in, we are going to add 10 grams of vanilla, seven grams of baking powder, and six grams of salt. I think I'm gonna to switch to my paddle attachment. Just based on the texture of this recipe, I feel like this needs to be beaten. I've also never seen a recipe that doesn't call for measuring out your flour, baking powder, salt together first, setting it aside, and then adding it all in together. Seems really weird. And just like always, I'm going to scrape down my bowl, get all the dry ingredients that are stuck on the bottom and on the side. Okay, our last ingredient that we're going to add is our flour, and that is 240 grams of flour. Once you get your flour all scaled out, go ahead and beat just to combine. Make sure you start on low with the flour addition. Also make sure that you uh, put your bowl in all the way so it doesn't 
Excellent, Excellent advice. <laughs> this smells so good. I'm just thinking that. This <laughs> smells amazing. For our next step, we're just going to pour it directly into the pan that has the cinnamon sugar already prepared on the bottom. Now feels really thick. So any yeah. tips on how to get that in without making a hot mess of things? Um, it really does feel like a cookie dough at this point. So I typically, for something like this, I would just hold it above my pan and start on one side and as I'm scooping out, just kind of pull my bowl to the back so that it comes out and lines the pan. And then you can just gently spread with your, your spatula. It'll be fine. <laughs> Love it, cool. All right, let's do this. It's fine, no worries. How's it working for you? I mean, it's getting from the bowl to the pan. <laughs> Is it not as um, polished as you would like? No, no, it's not. Um, browning the butter looked a lot prettier. I'm really surprised at this dough. Like I thought it was going to be more cake battery, but this is very much like a soft cookie dough. And now I'm even more intrigued by this. I cannot get over the smell of brown butter. Oh, so, so good. So now my challenge is it's getting stuck. And so I don't, I want to try to spread it evenly, but I'm, it's not doing that. What you can do is, um, take another sheet of parchment paper and just press. Also, you can use um, shorter strokes to kind of spread it out. Yeah, I was really expecting this to pour versus- mm -hmm. Same. I don't even know how to describe what it did. <laughs> I mean, if I wasn't so concerned about the raw eggs, I would be licking the spatula right now. As pastry chefs, we are always encouraged to taste our batters as we go um, to avoid that dreaded Ooh, I thought it was sugar and I added salt situation, which seems to happen way more frequently than I ever thought would, but I've heard so many horror stories. So if you want to taste this a little bit, you can. But again, there are always the risks with raw eggs and raw flour. Oh, raw I always hear about raw eggs, but the raw flour thing I just learned about recently. It's like, oh my gosh, like anytime there was no egg, I would eat the whole thing if I could. Yeah, raw flour can carry E. coli, which is always a concern. That's why when I started making cookie dough just to consume, I would toast my flour by just popping it in the oven. So as soon as you are happy with how well coated your pan is, you can go ahead and sprinkle the rest of the cinnamon sugar on top. I'm going to pop it in the oven. It's looking like 25 to 30 minutes. Typically what I do is take the longest amount of time and divide that in half. And that will be what I put my, my confection in the oven for. So that means at 15 minutes, we will rotate our pan and we'll just see from there. Do we need to put it in for another 15 minutes? Is it looking only like 10? We will make a judgment call there. So let's pop this in. Let's go ahead and get started on the margarita, which let's be honest, that's what you and I are both here for anyway. So. Um, first things first, we do need to get half an ounce of fresh lime juice together. Um, I'm going to show you a, a hack that I use for any sort of citrus juicing. Um, first things first is you always make sure you have at least two paper cuts because you can't do juicing without any sort of paper cuts. Start there. Uh, second thing is I always like to squish my limes just a little bit and then do a little rolling method across my trusty cutting board. And then I just slice it in half. And that is how I'm going to start by juicing. Now, the best way that I have found to get all the juice out is by using a simple fork. Um, so I just dab my fork into my lime and then I squeeze around the fork with my hand. And then I just go around the lime and squeeze around the fork. Oh, I definitely feel the paper cuts. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad you listened to me, Emily. <laughs> how is this um, fork hack working for you? It's working. Since we're not measuring for baking, you don't need to be as precise. So this, I'm just going to use my uh, my cocktail measurer thing. I just knew I was going to make a big old mess. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this over a bowl. That's exactly what I did. I put it over a, um, a measuring cup because trying to measure that into my... Yeah, it's just it's not going not gonna to work out well. No. Not at all. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour my half an ounce of lime juice into my cocktail shaker. 
we need one ounce of apricot juice, which I did what you did. I found the apricot nectar in a can. Since I've already doubled my lime, I'm gonna double this and do two ounces. All right, that already smells amazing. Next up is gonna be two ounces of tequila, which is our favorite party drink. And then one ounce of, it says orange liqueur. Grand Marnier is my, my drug of choice for orange liqueur, but triple sec is another orange liqueur that you could use. I'm going to slice another lime and I'm going to run the lime around the rim of my glass. And I'm gonna use tahine. My next door neighbor introduced this to me and it's this nice little spice blend. And she told me that I had to put it on my margarita and I was like, oh, okay. And so I did and now I've been putting it on all of my margarita. So I use the apricot nectar mm -hmm. as my Delish. liquid. And then I'm gonna salt it so it's got the sweet and salty. See, this is where my true skills come out. I'm so impressed. <laughs> Maybe you should take over the uh, alcohol portion of this show. We could make some fun cocktails. We really we could. For sure. <laughs> I actually had a friend um, today just send me a list. I don't even know where he was. Somewhere in New Orleans, but it was like all of their cocktails. And there were like nine different gin cocktails. And he and I always drink gin cocktails together. And he's like, now this is a list of gin cocktails. And I was like, I can't believe I've forgotten about all of these. I'm going to have to start making them on the show. Hey, Emily. Yes? I have a question for you as a bartender. <laughs> One time while I was bartending in New Orleans, I don't know why, but there were multiple bartenders from around the city that came in and were talking to me and all of the other bartenders about shaking techniques. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize that there were any specific shaking techniques. And then they were like, you know, there's this one where it's like the flip and then there's like this one. And I was just like, wow, so many things for me to learn. So I wanted to ask, do you have a preferred shaking technique for margaritas? You try to go fast and furious because you don't want to water down your mm -hmm. drink whatsoever. So as we're sitting here talking, we're doing exactly what I don't want to do. So yeah. I tried it and I have a clear one that now it's better to use a metal shaker because everything gets colder faster. So I am working with what I've got, which is a plastic one. So I want to make sure that I go as quickly as possible so that Oh, my timer just went off for our churros. We can give it just a minute. We don't want to water these down. So Fast and Furious is your preferred? Yeah. So I go up and down. Really quick. Perfect. And so what mm -hmm. I used to do is I would put a glass in to hold the ice back. And right. you'd always be doing this really quickly, right? So you just throw a glass in. But what about those of us who want to serve it over ice? Can I just dump all my ice in or do you prefer to use fresh ice? I would say fresh ice because if you're dumping with the ice, you're going to ruin your salted rim. Good call. Beautiful. It's so pretty. Okay, before we taste, I know we both really want to taste. Let's go ahead and check our pastries. Smells amazing. It really does. I'm going to rotate mine. Mine's clearly not baked all the way through. I'm going to put it on for another 10 minutes and we will check then. That smells really good. <laughs> Yay. You'll get to eat all of it if you want. Okay, are we ready to taste? We are. Cheers, Emily. Cheers. Yay. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Babe, do you want to try a sip of my apricot? <laughs> He's like, yeah. Do you really like it? I do. Yay, Gershon. I'm super happy. Emily, while you are whipping up a second apricot margarita for your lovely husband, I'm going to whip up what we're calling dipping chocolate. This dipping chocolate is going to be optional for our treat today. Um, chocolate and cinnamon go really, really well together. Apricots and cinnamon go really, really well together. So I'm going to combine all three of them and just see how they are. So here we go. For this dipping chocolate that I'm going to make, we need to have 60 grams of heavy whipping cream, three ounces of baking chocolate, 14 grams of unsalted butter, one gram of vanilla extract, and three grams of ground cinnamon. I'm going to start by measuring out 60 grams of heavy whipping cream into a small saucepan. I'm going to heat that on a medium heat until it comes to a slow boil. And while that is warming, I'm going to measure out 3.3 ounces of baking chocolate. As soon as it is brought to a light boil, I'm going to pour it over my chocolate and just let it rest. From there, I'm going to stir in my butter. Also, my timer is going off. So is mine. See if it's finished. Oh, actually, my cream is already boiled. 
So I'm gonna pour my cream over my chocolate and then I'm gonna check my pastry. My knife is coming out clean. Perfect. It looks like most of my sentiment has been absorbed in as well. I think it's ready. I'm gonna turn off my oven. I'm going to whisk my cream and my chocolate together. And then I'm going to add in my 14 grams of unsalted butter, one gram of vanilla extract, and three grams of cinnamon. Okay. I'm ready. I got my knife. There you go, my dear. Did you try it yet? I have it, but I'm watching Gershom eat it. He got to eat yeah. it before we did? Well, I was surprised that he jumped up that quickly. <laughs> I just put it over there so he could grab it off screen and then next thing I know he's- It's he's like eating. a churro brownie. Yeah, it's a churro brownie. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, okay. That's Does great. it work for you? Is he good with it? I mean, he's not speaking because he's eating it so quickly. So I'd say yes. Okay. But he's supposed to drink it with his margarita. Yeah, try it together. The brownie's gonna be gone before he even makes it back to the margarita. <laughs> so that's a good time. Yeah. So Emily, are we ready to taste test a bite of our um, delicious churro brownies or churro bars, whatever we want to call it, and our delicious apricot margarita? I cannot wait. All right. You have a do fork. It. I was just going to shovel it in my face. So. Well, my first bite I'm going to do without the sauce, but the second bite I want to dip in the sauce. So, okay, here we go. That brown butter just shines through. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. It works this pretty well so with the good. apricot. Mm -hmm. I'm not upset about any of this. That's amazing. All right, I'm gonna try it with the dipping sauce. Hmm. Optional dipping sauce is not bad either. I feel like you could also just drizzle this on top. Mm. This is so good. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely what I'm having for dinner tonight. <laughs> oh my God. That's really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is so tasty. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I could I could get you this margarita's going down way too smooth. <laughs> I mean, don't they all? <laughs> mm -hmm. I cannot get over the texture of this bar. It's kind of like silky, but also like chewy. I don't even, I don't even know how to describe this. It's so good. Mm -hmm. No, I, I took a corner piece, so I got the crunchy outside. It is so good. <laughs> that brown butter, man, I just can't, it's so good. It's so tasty. Mm -hmm. Well, Emily, let me ask you, how was your baking experience today? This was amazing. This was so much fun. Good. I have food on my like face it. and I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> hmm? I didn't notice. It's gone now. We're good. I might, I might have fun. some as well, but I, I genuinely don't care because that is so good. Damn, fantastic. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me today. I had an absolute blast chatting with you. It was so nice to see you again. I hope you enjoyed the pastry and the cocktail. Oh, it's so good. I'm so glad that you showed me how to do this and I cannot wait to just brown some butter later. I know, right? It's one of the best smells on the planet. I don't, I should do it every day just to make my house smell good. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic evening and I will hopefully see you sooner than later. It was so great. Thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Bye. Bye.